Hey everybody, Comic Crack with the first little unboxing. I got a package in the mail today. I had ordered uh, three things from Indigo Chapters uh, here in Canada. It's from companies, normally I like to go directly to the publisher. So the small press publisher is usually who I'm dealing with when I'm ordering stuff in because I can't find it here. And I like to go to them directly to deal with them but with these two companies that I've shown the first company uh, actually doesn't sell on their website they don't sell comics or books on their website they give you a selection of places to go to buy their books and Chapters Indigo is one of them uh, turned out to be a good thing because there was a sale on all the books that I got um, a few dollars off, not a huge sale by any stretch, but a few dollars off the regular price. And then with $25 or more in Canada, I think it just applies for in Canada, it's uh, free shipping. So, and it came really, really fast. I think I ordered this stuff Friday night, I believe, and it's now Thursday. So it came pretty quick, especially since they had uh, estimated it that it wouldn't get here till about the 11th. So today is what, the 5th or something like that. Um, yeah, it's the 5th today. So let's have a look. So the first company was, like I said, they don't do it. And then the other company is from overseas and I could order from them, but then the shipping, I would just get annihilated on the shipping. And I've actually been really lucky in finding a lot of their uh, publications at chapters. Um, everything that I own, has actually come from chapters from this other company. So let's start it out with a guy named Jesse Jacobs. Uh, I've talked about this book from him, By This Shall You Know Him. Uh, beautiful artwork, uh, beautiful book, uh, really, really nice story too. Um, really enjoyed it, but obviously the, the biggest draw is his are his layouts and, and his illustrations and the use of the couple of colors and just the overall feel to the whole thing. Uh, and it's from Koyama Press is the place. So this came out last year and I just found out about it the other day. I didn't actually know that he had another book. Uh, so I think that these are the only two things that he's done so far. So I jumped on this one. And we'll just kind of show you a little bit of the inside. Again, I don't know anything about the story. Actually, let's go to the back too. I don't know anything about the story. I bought it purely because it's him and, I, and how much I loved his other work there. So we'll just have a flick through. There we go. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. Uh, yeah, I mean, stuff like this is what draws me to him. His creature design and his character design is really interesting too, really unique and uh, otherworldly, but I love when he uses things like this, like patterns to make up the page and just straightforward panels, you know, uh, like, you know, three, six, what is that, 12, 12 panel pages there and the odd one like this, but creatures like that I love too, just his imagination is pretty incredible. So there you go. There's a look at Jesse Jacobs. Uh, maybe I'll talk a little more in depth about some of these books after I've read them. Uh, you know, it's another artist now that he has the two books. See if there is anything else that he's done. Maybe he's been in some anthologies or something. I'll have a look and maybe I can do a, a spotlight on uh, Jesse Jacobs. So there you go. That's the first one. Uh, again, called uh, Safari Honeymoon. And just to reiterate, if you see either of these books, um, especially if you watch my channel and you're a fan of a lot of the stranger stuff that I show, I'd highly recommend this. The I've mentioned it before in a video with some of these kind of smaller press publishers or sorry, uh, artists and writers. Sometimes, not all the time, the story is kind of secondary. Uh, it's, it's more about creating an art book that just happens to have text and a story holding the whole thing together. This has both in mind. Uh, story, like I said, I've read this one. This has both in mind as far as like there's a story to go along with the art and everything. So I'm, I'm assuming that it's the same with this one too. But uh, don't hesitate if you see these. Give them a shot. 
Um, I'm not sure where he's from. I know Koyama Press is Canadian. I don't know if Jesse Jacobs himself, himself is Canadian though, so there you go. And then the next one is from a company uh, that you've seen me talk about before and you've seen Earl Grey talk about as well, uh, No Brow Press from the UK. This was a total gamble. It's a uh, hardcover. I don't know the artist, Robert Hunter. I never heard of the book. I think it's 2013 that this came out. Let's just have a peek here. I saw it before it was written in the back page, but I just can't remember off the top of my head. Yes, 2013. And so I just totally took a chance on it and it was because it was no brow press and that I could see some of the interiors that I was willing to take a gamble on it um, because of stuff like this. So this is their first graphic novel, a graphic cause, Mogeny, and it's unbelievable. I've had this for a couple of years now or whatever, a while. I've had it for a while. I might have shown it off in a video back then, but uh, I don't think I ever did like a review. It might be worth doing a, a no brow press video as well too. Uh, another one that this is when I first heard of them and saw this beautiful book. Uh, it really feels like it was hand uh, handmade as far as um, even with the binding and everything. Um, just flipped through it when I saw it on the shelf and I, I didn't need any more convincing. I didn't really need to know too much about any of the artists or what kind of stories they were going to tell. It was just purely because of these interiors. Uh, and if you've seen any of the No Brow magazines, uh, a lot of this will look familiar. It's, it's one thing that I find really serves the company well. Like there's a lot of people with different styles of illustration, but the way that they present all their books, uh, the, the paper even that the books and magazines are printed on, the color palette that they use, uh, just give it this whole feel that's specifically no brow uh, press and I think that's really important and because just goes to show what you can do with kind of like a brand or whatever um, so I'll show you the inside has kind of a older illustration feel Is she okay there oh, yeah yeah um, so yeah, I don't know, some of it kind of reminds me of like uh, little golden book uh, illustrations and, and the color, the use of colors for these ones. So I guess the, the basic premise of this one is um, this guy Richard can't stop thinking about time basically and I think he uh, steps inside a clock and stops the hands of time and I think goes back in time. So it's his relation with uh, time travel I guess. Yeah, so there you go. Look at that page, that's great stuff. I don't want to open it all the way, but... Yeah, really nice work. So there you go. That's, uh, that's the two for this video. I uh, will see you in a bit. Hey everybody. So um, the next uh, the next part of this here, I'll get to in a minute. Uh, just a couple of words about uh, what was in the last one. I read them already. Um, actually, read them that same day. Um, loved both of them. Uh, so this one, the Jesse Jacobs Safari Honeymoon. Um, as usual, I mean, it, it's the art what draws me to it, but I'm also just really impressed with his storytelling period. Um, and that the part that makes it all the more interesting is his ability to create this uh, amazing world um, that's reminiscent of our own, but so filled with these strange creatures and strange environments. So it's basically this couple that's on their honeymoon that's a safari and it's it's their relationship and then also the relationship they have with their safari guide 
um, and then his world and what happens to him and it's just filled with these great kind of psychedelic moments and just strange otherworldliness. Um, at one point they enter this, they enter, they walk through this kind of zone that um, time uh, is shifted and they can see themselves in the future and see themselves in the past like 15 seconds into the future. So I can't remember what he calls it. Uh, let's see if I can find it quickly here. Uh, that's us about 45 seconds from now, impossible. Um, these foothills, foothills are peppered with pockets of temporal disruptions. You may perceive of time differently here. Do not be alarmed. Your sensory organ system will soon adjust, though you may experience a brief spell of disorientation and nausea. So when that goes on for a couple pages and, it, you know, it, we're exposed to these little creatures where you'll have a part of the story and then there'll be like like a little cutaway of like here's a page kind of describing or looking at this creature's behaviors and then we'll go back to our story so it's this really full fleshed out world with an actual story to tell a little slice of life in this world um, and it's fantastic uh, he's really somebody to keep your eyes on if you don't know him um, again like I said before I'd highly recommend that and I'd highly recommend anything I know he has a excuse me, sorry, a Tumblr site, a uh, Tumblr page that you can follow him on. Um, I haven't spent a lot of time yet looking into him to see what else he's published or what else he's working on. Um, so yeah, that's that one. And then this one turned out to be a huge surprise. Um, it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Basically, it was a folktale on how the tides were created. Um, you know, there, there's cultures that have different folklore as far as like, you know, how the raven or why the raven is black or why the raven got his wings or something like that. Something based on um, like a myth or a legend or, or um, they wouldn't call it that, but kind of like a, a folk tale basically on, on how certain things happen. So what this turns out to be is a, a folk tale of, of how the tides came to exist. Um, and the main character turns out to be kind of the keeper of the tides. And it's incredible. It's a really nice, nice read. Uh, the art is just beautiful. The way the story is told is incredible. Um, and it kind of just unfolds to this. At first, you know, you're not quite sure what this, there's a giant head inside this clock, which is the face of the earth and the face of the earth is in love with the sun, but the sun always ends up going down and leaving his world, and, and the face of the earth gets really sad when that happens, and things stop growing around him, and basically the, the boy in it finally convinces this face to follow the sun, and that what happens when the sun is setting, the sun is going into the water, so you have to follow the sun into the water and chase it when it goes down, and you'll be able to be with it. And because this face is in control of everything around his vicinity, as far as like nature is concerned, when he follows the sun to the horizon, he ends up bringing the tides and the water with him. So it's just a really beautiful story. Um, and I, by, by no means do I feel that that's a spoiler or anything. Um, it's just... It, it just took me by surprise. Like, it, it looked really interesting, and the little bit that I read about it, which wasn't very much, uh, sounded inter sounded cool enough, but the back doesn't do it justice as far as explaining the story. Um, so that was a really, really beautiful surprise. I'm really impressed with Nobrow Press and Koyama both are really fantastic uh, publishers right now that I, I would love to just kind of dive into and get more and more of because um, they both have some amazing things to, to share. So the package that came today was um, a Canadian Again, this is a, a Koyama Press uh, release. It's Michael DeForge, and it's uh, issue number. See on the spot, issue number six of his series called Lose, um, and it's kind of a little square-bound, soft cover. Uh, unlike his, I think I have just one other issues of his Lose title. And that one is filled with short stories 
This one looks like it's bookended by two short stories and there's one long tale that, uh, there's one long story that takes up the entire thing. I'll just show you a little bits of the interior. Um, a little more straightforward art in this one. The, he did a graphic novel, I think it was called Ant Colony. Um, he works on Adventure Time. Um, and the last, the stuff that I have from him that's from before, the, the art is a little more, it's a little more out there. Um, this is still a bit out there for sure, but it's a little more, this is a little more straight ahead uh, compared to the other things that I've seen him do. Uh, but it looks really cool and then there's a, a story on the back cover too about fetishes. So that's pretty exciting and this is 2014 as well, so this was new last year. Uh, what else does it say? Yeah, and the thing Koyama Press gratefully acknowledges the Canada Council for the Arts for their support of our publishing program. So they must get some uh, money from the Canada Council, which is great. Uh, yeah, I mean, who else is going to hype Canadian comics but, uh, but me? So there you go, Koyama Press. Check them out, have a look. Um, Michael DeForge, Jesse Jacobs, 100%. Check out Jesse Jacobs. And uh, much respect for uh, Nobrow for putting out this fine publication and many others. Um, I, th I really think it's time to do a, a look at some Nobrow, Nobrow Press because I've got quite a few titles of theirs now. So maybe we'll uh, hit you with the Nobrow. So I'm just waiting on one more package, which uh, I'm hoping comes this week. It's Monday right now that I'm filming this. So the last package I'm hoping comes this week and then I'll uh, upload this sucker for you all to enjoy and I'll read this in the meantime so um, at the beginning of the next spot you see we'll do a little review of this and I can tell you about it. Okay, thanks.